Good morning, church. Good morning, church. All right, we're going to get started with our uh, little selection from the uh, praise team. Amen.
now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Albeit, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and will he shew you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall shew it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and he shall show it unto you. I read for you John 16, chapter, verses 5 to 15. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers here and the doers of this holy and inspired word. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And now, Deacon Drake Busby is going to pray for us today, so pray for him as he prays for all of us. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, thank you for a new day. Thank you for watching over us as we slept. Thank you for watching over our friends, our family, our loved ones, the entire nation, dear Lord. We thank you. Thank you, dear Lord. For all the things, dear Lord, that we usually take for granted. Mm. For food, shelter, clothing. Thank you, dear Lord. We have movements of our various limbs, dear Lord. Mm. We can do things that many others aren't privileged to. And dear Lord, as we watch the news and we see all that is happening across the world, especially in Ukraine right now, dear Lord, we want to remember your people, dear Lord. We take it for granted. We walk the streets. We have crimes, dear Lord, but we feel free. We don't got bombs dropping on us. We're not bunkered down. We take these things for granted, dear Lord. But remember our brothers and sisters there in Ukraine. Because they're going through a lot, dear Lord. And I can't imagine what they're going through. But you know their plea, dear Lord. You know their cries. As Christians, dear Lord, we come together this morning, lifting up their country to you, dear Lord. Because, dear Lord, we can't fix everything as humans. We make a mess of a lot of things. That's why we put it in your hands, dear Lord. You know what to do. And as your people, dear Lord, we just pray to you for your help. Remember also, dear Lord, the people that are in Russia, because not everyone, dear Lord, is for these wars. That they are protesting, those who have been in prison, we know the unfair treatment they have received. But we thank you for everyone who have taken a stand for justice, who have taken a stand, dear Lord, for freedom. We thank you, Lord. Dear Lord, as really many people look to NATO and a lot of these government bodies, dear Lord, for your direction, for direction, we ask you that you give them the leadership skills that they need in these times. But as Christians, dear Lord, 
We put our leadership and our trust in you, dear Lord. Because we know that you're a God that sit high and look low. You're a God that do the impossible. According to the scripture, dear Lord, our brother David, it says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging bread. You will never leave your people. And at home here, dear Lord, we also are in our own war zone, dear Lord. We are fighting within ourselves. We have battles, dear Lord, that many people don't know about. We put on a facade, dear Lord, because, dear Lord, we look for the approval of society, but not the approval of you, dear Lord. So we put everything in your hand. Help us, dear Lord, as Christians to be strong in these times, to speak the truth. And dear Lord, for the various problems that we do have, we know many people have financial problems, many people, dear Lord, have relationship problems, many people, dear Lord, have job-related problems, dear Lord. We put all those in your hands. For all those, dear Lord, that are grieving, we pray for comfort. For all those, dear Lord, that are going through something. We lift them to you, dear Lord. Remember the sick, remember the shut in, dear Lord. Those who wish they could be here, but they couldn't because of different circumstances. We want to lift them to you, dear Lord. We ask you to give us the strength, dear Lord, and the wisdom in dealing with our problems. And dear Lord, most of all, dear Lord, give us the faith, dear Lord, like Daniel, that in spite of the situation, dear Lord, not to look upon the lions that may surround us, but to look to you, dear Lord, where our help comes from. Because our help comes from the you, dear Lord, who made the heaven and the earth. We thank you this day, and as we come here, we want to give you thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. Rest and abide with us, dear Lord, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, thank you, my brother and sister, for joining us devotion this morning. Uh, I just want to remind everyone that the fourth Sunday of this month, 27, is Deacon, Deaconess, and Mother's Day. So we'd like for all of you to come out and enjoy it with us. Our theme this year is men and women worthy to be called. So come on out. Of course, we're asking that men donate 100 and the women donate 50. So whatever you got, we will accept. We thank you. God bless all of you and have a good day. And we'll turn it over to the real estate. Thank you. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for the tithes, the offerings, the benevolence. We thank you for the gifts, and we thank you for the givers. Now, Lord, we just ask that this be used for the furtherance of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray and thank you. Amen. 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 Now we'll have a selection from the praise team.
Matthew chapter 20, verses 17 to 19. And Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples apart in the way, and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man shall be betrayed to the chief priest, and unto many scribes, and they shall condemn him to death. And he shall deliver him to the Gentiles, to mock, and to scourge, and to crucify him. And the third day he shall rise again. Hallelujah. I want to use for a subject, our Jerusalem. Our Jerusalem. We all have a Jerusalem that we must deal with and we must face. We, like Jesus, must face our Jerusalem. In each life, a little rain must fall. And there are going to be some good days, and there are going to be some bad days. You have grief and sorrow. Edgar A. Guest says that you must stand by the bedside of a loved one when you know death is near. You have to greet here. You're going to have some lonely times. These things, according to John, Jesus says in John 16, 33, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. No matter what we're going through, Jesus has already experienced it. He knows the outcome before the beginning. And so we are to take consolation in the fact that Jesus has already experienced it in the flesh. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father in heaven. Right. In Romans 8, 18, you find these words, For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You're going to have some lonely times when you feel no one cares about you. You're going to experience depression, but you will overcome. You're going to experience heartbreak, but this too will pass. You're going to lose loved ones, but you will survive. Your friends are going to walk out on you but you will still be all right. You're going to experience financial hardships, but you will overcome. You're going to become ill, but all illnesses are not unto death. Through it all, we must learn to depend on Jesus and his words of encouragement. We must face our Jerusalem just as Jesus did, with courage and determination. We, like Job, must wait on our change. Job 19, 26 and 27, you will find these words. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. You're going to see him as he is. When I shall see him for myself, and my eyes shall behold and not another, though my ruins be consumed within me. Job went through an awful lot before he penned these words. He had lost everything that he had. All of his possessions were gone. His family had gone, but he still says, I'm going to wait until my change comes. Because God is too merciful to let us suffer indefinitely. This pandemic, it's going to pass but we don't know when nor why. But if we continue to protect ourselves the best that we can, God will do the rest. Just hold on, help is on the way. In our text, Jesus knew what awaited him in Jerusalem, but he went on anyway. Jesus' work was finished. No more water to wine, no more cooling, scorching fevers, no more healings, no more opening the eyes of the blind, no more feeding the hungry, no more cleansing the lepers, no more raising the dead, 
no longer tormented by the scribes and Pharisees. It's all finished. Oh, let me tell you, when you come to the end of a segment of your life, it's going to be all right. You have no fear about tomorrow when the Lord is at the helm of the ship. John 10, 17 and 18 says, Therefore, do as my Father love me because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No man taketh my life from me, but I lay it down on myself. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. John 19, 10, when Jesus was standing before Pilate, when Pilate thought that he had the upper hand on Jesus, thought he had the power to make decisions about the destiny of our Savior. John writes these words, Then said Pilate unto him, Speakest, them, speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have the power to release thee? Jesus' answer was, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Yeah. Therefore, he that delivered me unto thee hath the greatest sin. Mm. Jesus knew the outcome. He knew when he was in Galilee, when he started his track to Jerusalem and he, Judea, he knew what was awaiting him. But he says, for this cause came I into the world. I came to die. I came to be persecuted. I came to be humiliated. I came to be beaten and otherwise killed. Jesus knew and he told his disciples on the road there for exactly what was going to happen to him. We have to face our Jerusalem. We've got to face the separation by death of loved ones. We've got to face economic uh, depravity. When you look at the price of gasoline today, wow. approaching $6 a gallon, we must realize that God is still in control. We'll still be able to get where God wants us to be. He has our undivided attention. The man tells us it's because of Ukraine. It's because of the greed of the oil companies that this oil is where it is. The price went up and the gas was still in the ground at the service stations. And so it's not the price of the gasoline. It's that God is showing us that he has control over everything. It is our Jerusalem that we simply must face. You must realize that the neighborhoods are not safe now. Robbers and murderers are everywhere, all over our community. But God is still in control. Yeah. We've got to go through things to realize the power of God. Yeah. It said that you never knew that God could heal if you never was sick. You would never know how he can soothe grief if you never grieved. So God lets us be exposed to certain segments in our lives to realize how important he is. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I've made my mind up that I'm going through. No matter what happens, whether the tribes go up or the tribes go down, I'm going to stay with the Lord. I'm going through from where I start. Sometimes it's not popular to make a stand, the right stand. You're criticized. That's your Jerusalem. Sometimes when you've done the very best you can do, someone brings you bad news and try to destroy your happiness. That's your Jerusalem. Sometimes your marriage is dissolved and you're sitting around grieving and wondering why. That's your Jerusalem. Loved ones die, your Jerusalem. You must have some bad times here because the joy that's awaiting us on the other side is well worth it. I don't know about you, I had so many Jerusalems that I had to go through, but I made it. I made it through and because I made it through, I have a testimony. Without a test, you do not have a testimony. You've got to experience something to be able to tell the world how good God is, how God delivered you from all of the things that you went through. You know, if you've never been hungry, you can't tell people how it feels to be hungry. If you've never slept in a car all night long because you had no place to stay, you can't tell people how it feels to sleep in a car. If you had, you had never had your lights turned off, your gas turned off at your house, you can't explain it to anybody. But when you had those experiences, when you walked through those Jerusalems that you faced, 
God just keeps on blessing you anyway. No matter what you must go through, go through it and say, Lord, I know that what's on the other side will bring me joy. Yeah. Sorrow may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. If I can make it through the night, I know tomorrow morning everything is going to be all right. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what next year holds, but I'm going to tell you that no matter what I've got to go through, I can do it now because of what I've already experienced. I know that I can face my tomorrow. I know that I'm not alone, that he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. Although my trials sometimes seem so unbearable, I can still make it because I made it through all the trials thus far. And I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me. I know that I must go through still some more stuff. I've got to face some illnesses in the days to come if I live long enough. I know that I've got to walk out of this pulpit one day unless they carry me out. I know that this has an end. I don't know exactly when it's going to end, but I know that preaching is going to end. I know that praying time is going to end. I know that reading the scripture is coming to an end. I can look at my body and I can tell that I don't have long to be here. When I look at what has happened already, I know that I'm almost at my journey's end. I don't know whether I cross over into 2023 or not, but if I don't cross over, you tell them that I made a decision a long time ago. In 1952, I made a decision that I was going to walk with the Lord. If I was hungry, I was going to walk with him. If I didn't have a house, I was going to walk with him. I was going through with good despise for you. I don't know what's going to happen. Somebody says, how long are you going to pastor? I have no answer for them. I don't know. I plan the God arranges, and so I'm depending on God to direct my path. I don't know if I'll have a house next year. I don't know if I'll have a car next year. I just thank Him that I have one today, and that's all that you can do. All you have is to take. You don't have tomorrow. You don't have next year. You don't have next month. You got Jerusalem to go through. But like Job, when it's all over, when it's all. Before we go into the communion 
our service. We'd like to uh, acknowledge our visitors. Can you please stand so we can welcome you today. Amen.
to make it through. For we walk by faith and not by sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.